In this video, we're going to find out why Iran built missiles, how it went from a war-torn nation to missile power, what made it build on its own instead of buying. Stick around till the end. This story's really worth hearing. It all started back in the Iran-Iraq war years. Back then, cities were bombed by enemy missiles every night. Iran had no real defense, only courage and endurance left. That's when it realized survival means building missiles itself. The war ended, but the threats never truly went away. America and Israel stayed near, watching and pressuring hard. Iran saw, without missiles, it would always remain vulnerable. So it began a massive push for missile deterrence. Another reason was that its fighter jets were getting old. No foreign country would sell Iran new modern aircraft anymore. Sanctions blocked spare parts, even for old planes it had. Missiles became the natural, cheaper alternative to modern air power. That's when the Revolutionary Guard stepped in and said, we'll build. Young engineers worked non-stop inside underground workshops for months. At first they made simple rockets, then more accurate ones. That's how Iran's real missile program slowly took shape. Missiles became more than weapons. They became symbols of independence. Iran wanted to prove it could stand without foreign help. Every successful test sent a message, we're self-reliant, we're strong. That message turned into national pride across the whole country. Iran realized missiles could stop enemies from striking first. Deterrence means making others think twice before starting fights. If they know the counterattack is real, they back off. That simple idea became the heart of Iran's defense doctrine. Sanctions made this path even more logical, economically speaking. Homegrown missiles cost far less than imported fighter jets ever could. With smaller budgets, Iran still boosted both range and accuracy. That's why its defense money went straight into missile industry. The more pressure came, the more motivated scientists became. Whenever the world said, you can't, Iran said, watch us. They learned from failures step by step and kept improving until they finally showed precise, long-range missiles of their own. Next came solid fuel technology and smarter control systems together. Solid fuel meant faster launches and simpler long-term storage options. At the same time, Iran built its own guidance systems. Missiles now became both deterrence tools and political instruments. Because missiles mean bargaining power in today's rough world. If you can hit 2,000 kilometers away precisely, no one talks down to you. They talk across. Iran learned military power brings respect at negotiation tables. Politicians saw missiles as real leverage in diplomacy's high stakes. Every negotiation needs some strength behind polite conversation lines. Iran used its missile power to raise its political weight. Missiles turned from defense tools into political bargaining chips. The Revolutionary Guard's role was crucial through all those years. Its aerospace force became the brain behind testing and design. Engineers worked underground day and night finding new innovations. Each success pushed Iran closer to a real, self-made deterrent. The Defense Ministry joined too, building large-scale production lines. Factories popped up across the country, away from foreign eyes. The Self-Sufficiency Organization built homegrown tools and key components. Iran could now design, test, and mass-produce almost everything. Soon came advanced models like Shab, Imad, and Karam Sharan. Ranges reached 2,000 kilometers, accuracy improving each year. Solid fuel rockets like Sejil and Fatah were later unveiled. Fatah reportedly reaches Mach 13, a real hypersonic leap. But the world was watching closely every single test. The U.S. called it a threat, pushing for tighter sanctions. 
Europe voiced concern, demanding limits in new nuclear talks. Russia and China said it's defensive, not offensive, actually. Israel felt the most danger from those growing missile ranges. Now, Iranian rockets could reach Tel Aviv in minutes. So Israel poured billions into layered air defense systems. Iran, meanwhile, insisted its missiles were for defense only. Arab Gulf states also started buying Patriot and Thad systems. They feared Iran might share technology with its regional allies. Still, they knew Iran didn't seek open war with them. Its main goal was deterrence and regional balance of power. Analysts say Iran learned that modern war means accuracy over quantity. So it moved towards precision-guided, smart-targeted missile technology fast. Now it can hit targets with less than 10 meters error, from distances where enemy radar can barely even detect anything. Missile power became a mix of science, politics, and ideology. Inside Iran, it turned into pride and national confidence. Across the region, it warned both old and new rivals. And globally, it showed Iran is still a serious player. Economically, too, this path made more sense than imported weapons. A single foreign jet costs as much as a hundred missiles. Under sanctions, that's a smarter, more achievable investment choice. That's why missiles became Iran's economic backbone for defense. Over time, drones joined the missile network as new partners. Iran learned how to combine them for smarter, coordinated strikes. Now its missile and drone systems work seamlessly side by side. A fast, precise, and relatively cheap defense structure was born. Today, Iran owns the biggest missile arsenal in the Middle East. Thousands of short, medium, and even hypersonic missiles are active. That power alone makes enemies think twice before attacking directly. Deterrence, in practice, is exactly that, making aggression unthinkable. But the program continues because rivals aren't standing still either. Iran's focusing on better accuracy, higher speed, stronger defense systems. It wants to make sure no threat can surprise it. So missile development remains in constant motion forward today. In the end, Iran's missile story isn't just about warfare. It's about survival, independence, and progress under pressure. A nation that turned you can't into yes we can. And now the Middle East can't be imagined without Iran.